It's been over four years since Saints of Sinners launched. I remember the hype that I and everyone else had when this game came out. It was insane, alright. This video is going to be solely on the base game, no DLC and no sequel. They'll both have their own separate videos, let's get straight into it. Real quick, we're trying to hit 500 subs by the end of the year, so if you're not subscribed, then please subscribe. The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners released on the 24th of January 2020, and I think that is the perfect VR game, and I am going to tell you why. The gameplay is peak. Grabbing a zombie, then smashing a bottle on its head, then stabbing them is so much fun. Getting your first katana and decapitating every zombie you see. Having to weave your way through enemy factions and decide whether or not you're going to stealth or shoot your way through them. Physically ducking behind cover when being peppered with bullets and blind firing around corners to get the upper edge. One complaint I have with the gameplay is how slow and boring it is when you aren't in combat. Which is, you know, most of the time. You'll be doing a mission and you hear a zombie noise, so you have to quickly drop what you're doing, stab a zombie and get back to it. The slow walking speed and the short stamina bar doesn't help this, but every map is pretty small so it kind of evens it all out. The graphics in this game are pretty amazing. The lighting, the textures and the models all look good. The signature art style is in place, the game will work on a quest, but I think it works well. It never takes away from the experience. That's really all there is to say about it. You play as a traveller named The Tourist, who travelled to New Orleans to meet with a friend. You see the friend hung upside down from a tree, and you watch him become zombified. You then take over his bus converted to a home. Then you choose if you want to side with either of two factions, or you can side with no one and just kill everyone. One of the factions named the Tower is enemies with Mei Benoit, who knew your friend. You work with Mei to gain her trust and, and uh, then you get a key. You repair a radio where you speak to a mysterious man later revealed to be named Casey, who is residing in the underground military bunkers that are known to all survivors as a mythical place where all your problems will be solved. But he's trapped in a communications room, separated from all the loot, and outside world. Water is seeping into his room and rising the water level. So it's up to the player to find out how to get into the reserve and either save or kill Casey. Ever since the game released, I've been doing a playthrough each year. In the years since the Aftershock DLC and Retribution released, it is being turned into a bit of a marathon. But the first game stands out as the most polished and enjoyable part of the entire process. I'll admit, the game was terrifying the first time I played it. Being jump scared while your flashlight is dying in a dark house stuck out to me the first time I played. But now, whenever I'm getting grabbed by a walker, I see it as an inconvenience, as he sure isn't going to kill me. The game feels incredibly easy to me after playing it, as much as I have. And I did this playthrough without crafting any items. But the atmosphere in this title is almost unmatched, maybe by Half-Life Alex, which I'm yet to complete, but Saints and Sinners is not really a difficult game, but I will tell you my strategy to make this game as easy as possible to be. 1. Be a sinner, it's so much easier. 2. When you see Mei, kill her instantly to get the key and avoid all the missions that she gives you. 3. When you see JB, just instantly kill him and get the regulator and the code. Four, when you get to reserve, just go in with an empty inventory, except for a couple heels to get to the church. Ring the bell if you want to kill everyone outside. Drown Casey. Fucking psychopath! I trusted you! Oh, I hope you burn in hell! You! No! It's not the best time for me right now. Then fill all your slots with the loot boxes. Five, salvage all the crates, then play the DLC. Then you'll be completely set for the sequel. I always enjoy coming back to these games, more than Boneworks or Bone Lab, as their stories are more linear, and they seem more as if an afterthought. But that applies more to Bone Lab. Seriously, what is that game's story? I couldn't tell you even at gunpoint. One thing that annoys me about this game is how weighty the pistols feel. I think that the one thing that should be one to one is the pistols, as I can't imagine that pistols weigh that much. Actually I looked it up, an average revolver weighs around 1kg, which is nothing. With how weighty everything feels, it makes the tourists seem weak. 
and the Taurus is meant to be seen as an unkillable, hardened survivalist. For someone who holds guns as frequently as a Taurus, you'd think he wouldn't sway his pistols as much as he does. I think that Saints and Sinners is an almost perfect VR game. The only thing that I thought was missing the first time I played it was a final battle, maybe a boss fight or a big horde, but the church rush in the final mission more than makes up for it. Next week I'll post a DLC review and I'll see you then, goodbye.